Welcome to another episode of Becoming a Techno Wizard. <laughs> Today we're going to the research of my business, the research plan of my business organization, you know, type of thing I'm trying to do here. So we, we left off on figuring out, on niching, niching down on the target audience, the people who I'll be researching. All right, so if you wanna, you know, see that again, it'll be up there in the, in the, in the cards. We're going to jump right into this next portion, which is um, really kind of figured out. But now that we're kind of having uh, had have a more solid idea of that niche, or that target audience, we can you know look at these questions that I want to ask, these objective questions I want to learn, the things I want to learn from them, and kind of see if there's any more I need to add or change or anything like that. And then maybe we can get into you know um, the pre-screen survey uh, and the methodology and stuff like that. So. This so research project is to learn more about people who are looking for ways to improve their quality of life, but not sure how to do so. So this is, you know, still a fairly accurate um, way of describing this here. <laughs> I might read, provide more actionable, accurate self-development online resources for college age, second, third generation immigrants living below the poverty line in America. How can we help them live more self-fulfilling lives, such as having a stable base of safety, connection and esteem, leading to openness to experiences, love being, and purpose of healthy transcendence. So um, I think that's a decent you know, way to kind of summarize all that in a, in a very simple um, and yet straightforward way. This is a gender of study with a more open-ended approach to gathering information about the needs people have and how they currently go about solving them. Yeah, that's still accurate. Because um, again, we're not evaluating something that's already built. I have no idea what it's gonna look like yet. We're just trying to figure out what should be built. So that's why it's going to be generative. By doing this research, I hope to get a clearer idea of what set of problems and customer types to focus on. Indeed, again, it's just trying to figure out what's out there, you know. Um, and here are the key questions that I wish to answer. So what are some of the most difficult aspects of improving one's quality of life? Indeed, I think that's a good question to start with. Um, I'm not going to say start with. We can prioritize these later on, but definitely an important question to have. Um, cause again, I have an assumption and I have an idea of what some of these problems are based on my own life and based on, you know, what I know about this area, but I want to make sure that I'm not, you know, I want to see for sure. Like I don't want to base on my assumptions. My assumptions is just where I'm starting from, but I want to, you know, just, that's just an hypothesis. I need to ask these questions to see, you know, if those problems are shared with other people and what those problems are. How do people use the internet to improve their lot in life? Um, again, this is my context. I'm not solving all the problems, right? I can't solve all those problems yet. So I'm specifically looking for people who use the internet, you know, to, um, which is these areas here, you know, um, what, what areas do they search? You know, what, what online resources and stuff like that do they have? How do they find, um, actionable information? So, yeah, I think these are some good questions to ask here. What resources do people typically find how difficult is it to find useful resources through search yeah yeah and again it's, it's good to know that these are objectives like these are things i'm trying to learn these are not the questions that i will ask people um just to make that distinction how long does it take to find actionable information how do they know if a piece of information is accurate indeed exactly because <laughs> again my own experience it's it's very easy to find information that you think is good and then you read it and you go through it and maybe you try to apply it, but then you realize it doesn't really fit or it doesn't, it's not as actionable that you, as you thought it was. And then you start to learn um, as you talk to other people or you figure out better information, you start to realize that it was actually misleading. You know, <laughs> you thought you found something that was very useful, but they had a whole bunch of accurate information, but you were so ignorant that you didn't even see, you didn't even realize how bad it was. So that's kind of what I want to discover too. Um, both from the subjective experience of, you know, people first, the, the first experience of, maybe I should write that down. Um, subjective experience of perceived utility. I know I spoke the wrong, I use terrible. Whatever, I can fix that later. As well as like the, the kind of like the first time, um, first time what, what am I looking for experience like when you first see information you know piece of information online an article a podcast or whatever how do you know that this is gonna be useful right like what's the 
what's the word for that? Um, I guess first impression versus, um, I guess retro, retroactive or like when you look back like after you see something, you begin to uh, consume it, and then either you after you've applied it or after you tried to apply it or after you've gained some other information, then you look back and realize, oh wow, that that wasn't. That was not good advice, you know. So I need I need a term for that too. I think that's going to be very important to figure out. Um, so first impression of the information that you get versus retroactive, um, retrospective. I guess that's a good term. Yeah, um, I can go into more details there, but I think that's 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 good for now. So yeah, I think that that'd be a good way to kind of understand how people see information, how people consume information, things like that. Like maybe again, this is why I'm asking these things because maybe maybe people don't have this distinction. Maybe they just see a, you know something, they consume it, and then later on they find something else and they never you know look back on it. Maybe you know people do that too. I'm not sure. I do that. I mean, I usually have a kind of a retrospective and and look back on things that I learned, but I'm also in the I'm also a weirdo who documents everything as evident as, you know, with these videos. Um, so I don't know. Uh, what other resources online do people use for self-improvement? How well do they or don't they work? Indeed. So this is kind of similar in terms of um, actionable. So maybe I might, you know, put this in there. Um, but the other thing here is, is the question of, of searching for information and then other resources such as like maybe in a community. Maybe I should actually specify that. Um, community groups, you know, Reddit, Discord, and other social media. I wish I, should I just call it social media groups? And maybe there's no need to make that distinction between finding information online, like searching things versus finding things in social media. Um, I'm not sure if that's a clear distinction that people make either, but it could be something, you know, that's important to kind of think about. Like if you find something from, you know, if you find a piece of information that somebody shares with you through a social media platform, do you, do you get something different from it or do you think about it differently versus if you just if you yourself you know googled information or found some information on youtube um or you know part of a recommendation engine or whatever so um and it might be a distinction also between where they find information online such as if it's in a core type of thing or is it if it's in reddit or if it's in you know a random article or whatever like do people look at um, when people are like, how did that's that's another interesting question. Again, it, I'm I'm just put, posting a lot of stuff here. I might end up not using all of this, but we'll we'll see. I think it's Im important to have a bunch of things on there. I wonder if this should be a different question. So if it's like a dot org, you know, um, if it's, you know, from a reputable, what you think is a reputable source, like, you know, uh, psychology, you know, dot org or versus if you look at just uh, Christian mingle, you know, advice or something, I don't know, <laughs> you know, people, and maybe again, maybe people look at this, maybe they don't. Um, but I think that would be important to know again as well, because we're trying to figure out how do we you know help people online how do we get them access to better information how do we kind of um get in there before they get access to bad information and stuff like that so i don't know
What's some other ones? Or let's see, whatever. You get it. Um so yeah. How will they do they or don't they work? Now we get to this part. What needs do people have? What needs do they have trouble fulfilling? Yeah, it's a very basic question here. Again, just trying to see. And maybe I should, you know, clarify this as well. What needs do people have that they try to fulfill online? That they try to, maybe not fulfill, but um, I guess, I mean, yeah, I can, I can use that word. Because that's I, I know what I mean by that word. Like, again, this is why this is just a... A, a list of questions that I want to ask or that I want to learn more about or answer but when it comes to the discussion guide I'm going to ask it a completely different way I'm not going to use these words that you know are too spe or not specific but too um, nuanced that may not be um, that may not be in the that people regular people might not you know have an idea about like I, I, I've been diving a lot into self-fulfillment so I understand vaguely pretty much what I mean by that, but I understand that it might be vague for other people as well. All right, um, how effective are the current methods of solving one's own needs? Indeed, indeed. Um, so I wanna see like, do people, when, they, when they're doing this research or when they're looking for help, um, do they actually feel like it's helpful? You know, if they find something on the social media post, um, do they feel like it's helpful? Or do they just realize that it's not helpful, but they still look anyways, you know? Um, hey, that would be an interesting question. How do people look for resources that, that may help them? How do they know it will help? How do they measure success? Yeah, so it's basically the same question here. Um, different way of asking it. So maybe I just leave it there. And I'll, I'll pick which one of these, you know, I'll conflate it down into something um, that gets to the essence of it with less words later. How do people regard self-help therapy, curated content, etc.? Yeah, so same same thing. I think for this one, the 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 thing I'm trying to figure out here is uh, why did I put this one here? I feel like I had. I, <laughs> I had like three I had different ways of, of, of phrasing the same question. It's basically the same type of thing. Um, what I was really trying to get here to get here though is the, um, I think I should separate these. Cause I, yeah. Cause what I'm trying to get here to, I, what I'm trying to do here is figure out how do, how do people think about self-help versus how do people think about therapy versus how do people think about getting curated content that may or may not be self-help per se but is helpful for their, you know, self, for their growth um, and things like that. So this is the actual genre I can ask about. You know, this is a genre that I think people are familiar with. Especially online. I want to say other platforms that's like, um, what's the word for it? It's not like official. You know, BetterHelp is supposed to, I know they had some problems in the past, but they're supposed to have. Um, psychologists that are like licensed you know um, but there are other platforms for therapy that aren't necessarily you know from licensed folks it's kind of like crowdsourced and that type of thing like i think there's one called um seven seven cups of tea or something like that you may have to look back at that 
how do people think about curated content? They may not specifically be for self-help, but is helpful. <laughs> And then what does personalization mean for them? Yeah, definitely I want to know that. Because um, I, I learned that this is this is a much more vague kind of um, word than, I, than people first kind of have an idea for. I've realized this past 15 minutes, so I'll wrap this up. But yeah, personalization is like, like what is it? Like for some people it might be just, oh, put my name here. Uh, but for others it might be more like a curation type of thing. Like for me, when I think about personalization, I think about curating the entire experience not just oh let's put my name here you know says hi elijah welcome to no this is that's not personalization to me that's just you know throwing that in there it's like a matlab or whatever it's called I, when i think about personalization i'm thinking about you know it sees my data sees like how i use the internet or how i use how, what type of information i look for kind of sort of like a youtube algorithm but set the youtube algorithm does not it's not necessarily all for me um it's a lot of it is to, you know, lead me to things that will increase engagement, you know, that will lead me to click on ads or whatever. Um, but the YouTube algorithm and many other algorithms still do expose you to things that would be interesting to you. Like I've recently found a lot of really cool channels on YouTube um, because I've been very specific about curating my, my, my experience on YouTube and these platforms. And I wonder if people have that similar thing. Like, do they constantly you know, try to maneuver the algorithm to give them, you know, interesting data, or do they just don't care and just be like, oh yeah, just put my name there, um, or, you know, something else. So I would love to know that because this platform has to be personalized. I want to make sure it really is getting to people's context, people's lives, and um, making a difference for them because it's, it's centered for them, you know, not just a mainstream thing that is um, kind of sort of, you know, um, has their name on it or whatever and then how can we humanize the experience um, so this is again this is kind of like the overarching thing so I, I'm gonna be able to answer this question by looking at everything they're you know they're looking at you know all these problems that they're having um, all the the good things and the bad things that they experience online and then seeing um, okay how can we take all that and put it into a platform or experience that is actually feels human and feels you know connect connective and all this other stuff um, so in that regard, I should probably ask, you know, what makes um, the current experiences um, inhuman? Like, human or not? That's a really bad way of saying it, but I'm just trying to, you know, wrap this up real quick since we're in the last part. And then I want to, I want to say, um, I want to figure out. What are the positives? You know, what what um what are the best parts of online of using online resources for self help and growth. Terrible, terrible. But yeah. So I'm going to wrap that up there, and um, next episode, I guess I'll go ahead and really, I want to, I want to speed this up. <laughs> I've been really procrastinating on this stuff, and these, these videos are the only time I've ever, <laughs> I do much progress on this, so I'm going to do my best to um, spend some time over the next few days and just work on this offline, and then so the next one video, we can get right into some, some real stuff, um, but not like this is not real, but. I just need to make more progress on this um, just for my own stuff so but anyways that's that's it for now um, thanks as always for for watching and uh, let me know what you think as always and have a great day see you bye bye